I never knew I could do art. I didn't have a clue. Uh, like Susan said, I couldn't draw a stick man. And then I learned that it isn't about the end product, although I've fallen in love with all my products. Um, it's, it is the process of doing it. Um, I made this mask in my living room with my husband and I looking at all these materials that I had been given by Susan and Gloria. And I just had a blast doing this project. If you notice the three little flowers down at the bottom, those are three roses from some old earrings I've had around forever. And the Band-Aid on the person's brain. Um, that was a nice little touch, but but it's not it's all, not all negative. There's lots of positivity in this piece, and I love it. I, I'm hoping you can see this one. This mask was made by a carer, and I've talked to her about it because see how it's been torn away? She feels that she's lost part of herself by the heavy burden of caring um, for her loved one with dementia. And isn't that amazing that she was able to put these thoughts, these really deep hurts on a piece of art and be able to let it out by doing that. That's really what art's all about. Um, the, the, the words on this mask, um, they all go to how to be more positive, how, how to make choices to have the best life you can have instead of just going home and getting your affairs in order. Um, art gives us this, and it doesn't matter what type of art, whether it's collage, whether it's mask, whether it's painting, excuse me, storytelling, poetry, it just really opens the door for us to feel comfortable with not only ourselves, but the others around us. Thanks, Myrna. And I'm so glad you shared the other mask that you have the picture of behind you there, because uh, each one was so unique and depicted so many different things about dementia. So I want to say just a little bit now about um, the uh, art making. Oh, I, I, yeah, this is the project slide, right? I'm getting ahead of myself here. Um, this is a project that was funded by the Canadian Institutes for Health Research. And as I mentioned before, was really focused on the topic of how do people live well with dementia? And in particular, what in the art making workshops did people want others to know about this because we realized that in order to counteract this dominant uh, story about dementia as decline, we need to have a community that act is actively aware and involved um, and understands what it means to live well with dementia. So in our project, we had three phases. We did interviews with people to start, and then we moved into these art making workshops, which was um, really uh, an opportunity to work together and individually to create artwork about living well with dementia and about the challenges. And then in the third phase, um, which because of COVID we had to move online, we created an online art exhibition that showcased more than 60 works that came out of these workshops. And we've mounted that and I will provide you with the link to it at the end of this presentation so you can take a look for yourself. Um, next slide, please. So here's an example of one of the beautiful collages made by Cindy. And this um, expresses her perspective as a carer for her husband with dementia about all the things that um, meant so much to both her and her husband in living well with dementia. And you can see she has uh, used a variety of natural materials here. There was fresh moss and some twigs and uh, uh, little flowers she brought with her to put on this bush to depict the many branches of living well with dementia. Next slide, please.
So the workshops themselves were, um, we were very fortunate in that we did have an opportunity to have four workshops in person before COVID. And we came together in the North Burnaby Community House and uh, we had a session, uh, well, four different sessions there. Um, making artwork and involved uh, 24 people, uh, about half of whom had dementia and half were care partners. One of the things we strive to do when we were setting up the workshops and having interviews with people um, in preparation was to find out what kind of materials they were naturally drawn to so that we could provide a whole range of things to make and to do in art making and that everyone would have something that appealed to them. So there was a great array of materials and setting up for these workshops involved Gloria and myself and Natasha and others bringing um, you know, baskets of pine cones and fabric and old typewriters and uh, clay for modeling, all these kinds of things that we could use together to make art. Um, in this photograph, you see a warm up activity that we did, which is called wet on wet. And uh, you had a wet page and we would start at one station and put some blobs of color on, and then everyone would put down their brush and move to the next station and continue working uh, on the piece for the, the station next to them. And so as you moved around the table, you everyone worked on each of these pieces and it was a very collaborative kind of um, shared art making session where nobody could get too attached to the outcome because um, no matter what you painted, someone else was gonna come along behind you and put their own stick, uh, stick their own mark on it. So that was a lot of fun. Next uh, slide, please. And this is one of the other activities that we did. Um, one of our participants had been uh, a very proficient naturalist and had always loved uh, the outdoors, knew a lot about plants. Uh, he was usually very quiet and soft-spoken. And so we thought in creating an activity to do together at the beginning of the workshop, we would use all natural materials and enable him to work with things that um, he would feel very comfortable with and, and, and knowledgeable about. And so this was a group activity. We spent maybe half an hour listening to quiet music and everyone um, picked materials up off the table and we made this uh, mandala out of all these beautiful natural uh, materials. This was a very kind of meditative activity and, and people really got deeply involved uh, in placing things on um, the the canvas and in trying to put them in such a way that they they mirrored something um, that they recalled seeing in in nature or that they mimicked a pattern in nature. Uh, and then when we talked about the activity of creating it, this uh, fellow, one of our participants, um, was actually very talkative. He he felt so very comfortable and so very um, calmed by this activity. The next slide, please. So these are some thoughts that we um, had after doing a number of these workshops, some in person and some actually online as well after COVID, that it was really important to take what we call a strength-based approach. And that involves figuring out for people what they enjoy doing, what kind of materials they're drawn to, what will make them feel confident and able to undertake this activity to build some confidence through working with things that are familiar, such as the natural mandala that I mentioned. I'm just having trouble seeing the bottom of the slide because of the texting here. Um, okay, and promoting discovery also through working with unusual things. So people were, you know, kind of enabled to pick up something they'd never tried before. We had people doing sculpture with clay and, and people who had never written poetry sitting down at, we had old typewriters that would go clackety, clackety, clack, and those were kind of fun. So there were all these opportunities to, to try something new as well as something more familiar. Um, as I've already mentioned, we did some activities that were individual and some that were more kind of co-creative. Um, and we tried to engage people in ways that um, fostered new relationships so that 
it wasn't always, you know, one table of people with dementia and another table of carers, or we mixed it up and we all became um, collaborators, co-creators in this, this research endeavor. Um, I can remember sitting down next to somebody and making a collage with ferns and another time finding that I was having a wonderful conversation with another participant about the jams and jellies that she liked to make in the summer. And I made a little clay blueberry pie. And so it was very much a kind of a conversation that is sparked by the creative process, but also the activity of our hands. There's a lot of really interesting research that shows that when our, our hands are active, our brain is active and we're engaged. And so for example, if you doodle while you're on the telephone, chances are you will remember what you talked about in the conversation you just had more than if you don't, if your hands are idle. Those are kind of interesting just things to know about how we process and, uh, and how things stick. Next slide, please. So Myrna, this is one of your creations I most love, <laughs> your painting called Sailboat. Would you like to talk about what went into this one for you? Um, it ended up being kind of interesting. I really like color. Um, I love yellows and oranges and browns and rusts and oh, I love color. Um, and so I, I was just playing around with with the color and you can see up in the corner that I started kind of with red. Um, to tell you the truth, I don't know how the sailboat ended up in there because I was so engrossed in the process of experimenting it. And uh, I did some scraping there and I'd never done that before. And, and, and when it turned, when I finished it um, and, and looked at it and others around me, we're looking at it it did it i did create a sailboat uh to me it's a sailboat in a storm but but not a a cold dreary storm a storm of love and light and I, yeah i have it in my wall here <laughs> next slide please so one of the things we found was um after making art and usually having a cup of tea and something we bake to bring to share, um, it was really important to talk about the art making. As Myrna's just said, you know, sometimes um, it's not until you've made something and you look at it again or you start to tell someone else about it that you realize what it means to you. And so this particular piece, which is called Splash, um, was one that provoked a lot of discussion in one of our um, circles that we had to share the artwork after making it. And uh, we rotated it around a couple of times, sometimes with the, the dark at the top and sometimes with the dark at the bottom. And it was very interesting to see that people interpreted it differently. And it became a kind of a metaphor for the journey with dementia, moving um, either from the out of the darkness and into the bright, the yellow, like Myrna's painting, um, or for other people, uh, worries about the future and moving from the bright into the dark. And so this artwork became um, quite a provocative piece for us beginning to understand how people think about their trajectory with dementia and, and how they see themselves, what their worries are, but also where they're drawing real strength in moving toward the light and toward the yellow. Next slide, please. Here's a couple more examples of things that, um, this is one called, it's an unfinished piece by, by Jack, who had had a great affinity for wood and for, um, I believe selling um, furniture or wall coverings um, in his working life. And he took these pieces and while he was assembling this uh, collage, he described all the different veneers that he knew and that he worked with. And to the point that, you know, people who knew him turned and looked at him in astonishment with the detail of the stories he was sharing about 
the wood and the pieces he chosen um, for this particular artwork. I, I find it personally a very intriguing piece to look at with the little stone that is poised just on the edge of the um, the wooden stick there, you know, balanced perfectly almost. Um, um, and yet there's a sense that something's about to happen with it. And I, I found this a very intriguing piece. Um, Myrna, I don't know. I mean, this one speaks to me of how important it was in our discussions for people to be allowed to interpret work uh, according to their own um, life experience. But what do you see in this one? Um, I see very much uh, the same as you you explained. But what was so important in this whole session was in our circle, which was everybody that had made some artwork, um, we all talked about the piece. And, and it, it was almost like a love-in. Like everybody was really pleased for everyone else's work. And, and our brains were stimulated to think about pieces of art like this one. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't there when Jack made this particular piece. And so I missed that, that essence of him and, and his work throughout his life. But I, I just love um, the rock teetering on that piece of wood and, and knowing that something's going to happen. But what is it? I, it's, it I, I really like it. Next slide, please. And this is, um, I think, probably the last of the images we have to share with you called a photograph called Swooping Heron um, from one of our participants who would prefer not to be named, but who is an extraordinary photographer. This is a beautiful, beautiful image that they've captured here. Um, alongside it, you'll, you'll see here, this is the artist's statement, and this has come from directly from the uh, the website, the online um, exhibition I mentioned. And I just draw your attention to, to one part of this. Um, this person's talking about being in the park and fiddling with their camera and then suddenly seeing the blue heron swooping down from nowhere. When I look at that picture long enough, it feels like he's gliding, skimming through the water. I get a bit nostalgic looking at it because it looks like my journey with dementia. Someone else might see a different kind of journey, something difficult they've experienced. So I think that beautifully expresses the way that creativity can be a, an avenue for us to discover what we feel and think, but also in sharing it generously with others, it enables them to um, have a similar kind of reflective process and understand something they're going through in a new way. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned, this um, is the link to the art exhibition. And I highly recommend you all go and check it out. It's called In There, Out Here, Art Making Space to Live Well with Dementia. And that is the website. If you just uh, go to artmakingspace.com, you will be taken into the exhibition and guided through the collage, the painting, the poetry, and other pieces that this work resulted in. And we'd love to hear from you uh, with your feedback on that if you take a look at it. So last slide, please. Last slide, please. One more um, couple of things we just wanted to mention. Um, Myrna has written a book about living well with dementia. And I think the slide what follows this one has um, some details on it about the book. But this is just an extract from her book that is packed full of wonderful tips and ideas. And it's Myrna's description about how to make a collage. So if you're not quite sure how to get started, we thought, let's share that with you. Did you want to comment on that and then maybe in the next slide, tell folks a little bit about your book. Sure. Um, because making this collage was so much fun, 
Um, and it's something my husband and I worked together on rather than just discuss. We actually did it together. And um, and it, it was joyful. Um, and I loved making it. And I loved the interaction between my husband and myself and the kinds of things we talked about as we were finding things to put on uh, our particular collage. Uh, my collage uh, was about sort of dementia before, uh, while there was a lot of stigma. And then once a person overcame the stigma, how life could open, almost like a flower, life could open and you realized you had choices. And so I wanted everybody else to share um, if they wanted that that particular feeling that I had from making that and and ever thinking of Susan and Gloria, um, because they opened this whole world to me. And, and if I can just open it for one more person, uh, then that's wonderful. So I actually wrote a book. Um, I wrote a book about uh strategies and tips although i have probably more personal stories and strategies and tips what i wanted to do was just write a book that somebody could just read while sitting having a cup of coffee it takes a couple of hours um it's it's like sitting down at a, a restaurant having a cup of coffee with your friend and you're just chatting um, some of the tips are things that I've kind of learned the hard way. My famous one is telling people about using hair removal instead of toothpaste because I had too many tubes and couldn't distinguish. Um, but the comments I'm getting from people who have read my book have said that it was, it, it feels very much like just sitting down and having a lovely conversation. I wouldn't allow any auditing that's the wrong word. I wouldn't allow any corrections on my sentence structure or my spelling. It's just from me to you. And that's the way I wanted it. Uh, we actually put it out on November the 7th. Um, and, um, and I sold a lot of books um, to people who have somebody with dementia either in mind or they're worried that they may be getting dementia or their parent has and they want to understand more. Um, and so I'm really pleased. Uh, I'm pleased that it's meaning a lot to a lot of people. I think there's one more uh, slide with a poem. So Myrna, would you like to close us off with your final poem? Sure, I would. Citizen Reclaimed. When we're searching for who we are and who we, who we may be, arriving at that destination is not the finality of our journey, it's just the beginning. As we aspire to learn, to love and to share, it allows us to open to giving, to receiving and to sharing, to feel our innermost thoughts, to allow ourselves to begin our journey of joyous discovery of that inner joy and that's what art's done for me the final slide please i'd just like to acknowledge um others on the project team both here in bc and in washington um some of the artists and the students who worked with us and all of the contributors to the artwork that goes into the online exhibition and finally, to thank our funders, the Alzheimer's Society, the Michael Smith Foundation for Health Research, and the Canadian Institutes for Health Research. Thank you so much for your attention. And Myrna and I would be very pleased to have any comments or questions.